Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial will discuss multiple classes in one single source code file. I'm going to open up my website here, javacjava.com, hit the begin, and I'm going to scroll all the way down here to multiple classes slash one file. So up until now, I have only included a single class inside of each .java, Java source code file compilation unit. In Java, you can place as many classes as you like inside of a single source code file. However, there can only be one public class per source code file, and the class declaration name must match the name of the file. Now, I haven't talked about access modifiers yet, so don't worry about the public keyword yet. Um, in this tutorial, I will include two classes in the same source code file, and we will compile the source code file and see what happens. This tutorial will build on concepts from my Introduction to Methods tutorial. Let's come down here and let's go ahead and highlight all this code here. Hit Control c to copy or right-click and select Copy. Move the browser off screen. Start, search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to Start, Run, type in CMD. Let's type in Java C at the command prompt here and press enter. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll through. If you don't, if you see an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure that you get that installed and configured properly before you continue on with these. Type in cd space backslash. cd is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go down to the root. Let's type in make md and then uh, Java, which will make a make directory a Java folder. I already have it, but if I didn't, it will go ahead and create it for me. It'll create it for you if you don't have it. CD Java. I'm going to do a make directory. We'll call this uh, multiple classes. And then we'll do notepad multiple classes.java. Now, multiple classes.java is our source code file name. Must end in the .java extension there. Okay, let's go ahead and hit Control V to paste or right click and select paste. We'll go up and we'll save this here. So we've got a class declaration of multiple classes. We also have a class declaration of box. Our multiple classes class here has an entry point, a main method entry point, and the box does not. It just has a single method to return the volume of a box. And um, from watching my previous tutorial, this is basically identical here. So. The box class, we're going to create box objects up here in the multiple classes object here. So the box class just has this single method and it has an int data return type on this method called calculate volume, right? The parameters that it's going to be taking are box length, box height, and box width, all int data types. And then we're going to have, declare a local variable called um, return value, and then we're going to assign that to box length times box height times box width, which is obviously the calculation for figuring out volume. And then we're going to return that value here, right, as an int return data type. So coming back up here to our multiple classes, well, our main method entry point, first thing we're going to do is declare a reference variable, a box type reference variable name small, right? And then we are going to allocate a uh, new box object and assign it to reference variable small. So small equals new box, right? So um, small is, at this point, just basically is a reference variable that looks at a box object, its own unique box object, per se. In the previous tutorials, I kind of told you that small is, a, is an object, and it's really good to kind of think about that way for a little while. You know, as you become a little bit more advanced and everything, you'll realize actually what it is. But... For now, just think of small as your as your object, right? And then we're going to create a, um, a medium reference variable to a, its own box object and a large, large uh, reference variable to its own object. So small, medium, and large all represent separate objects, okay? So what we're going to do is very simple here, is we are going to initialize this small volume um, variable int data type, we're going to assign that to the result coming back from our small object, right? And then using the dot operator to invoke the calculate volume 
method of the box object, right? We're going to pass it 5, 5, and 5. So our box is going to be a perfect little cube there, 5 inches by 5 inches by 5 inches, right? Calculate volume will receive in the 5, the 5, the 5. Multiply all those together and return that back, right? Right here. And that'll assign that to small volume. And then we're just going to do the string literal here plus uh, the value of small volume. And we'll do that with the medium volume object and the large volume object too as well. Um, right here and here. So, sorry, medium volume variable is what we're going to assign the result of calculate volume to on both the medium and the large object. And we'll display that to the console on each one of those. So, um, let's go ahead and run this here. Which this was exactly, um, changed my mind on running that there, sorry. Basically, in the last tutorial, this class was in its own separate box uh, dot java source code file, right? So let's go ahead and clear the screen. We'll type in java c, and then we'll go ahead and pass it the name of the source code file that we want to compile, which is the compilation unit, and we'll hit enter. Now we had no errors or anything like that. So what actually happened here is let's go ahead and type in dir. And as you can see, we've got a single source code file. It still created the box.class bytecode for that and a multiple classes.class bytecode for that class there. So even though they're both in the same file, when the Java compiler go ahead and goes ahead and um, compiles them, it puts them into separate bytecode files for the actual class source code, okay? Whereas before, we had two separate source code files and of course, we would compile the box we java c the box.java and end up with a box.class and then we would java c the other file and end up with that other file.class. I think it was called method intro.java and method intro.class. So anyway, you can see that's what happened there. So let's go ahead and clear our screen, type in Java. And I'll strip off that there, multiple classes. So the volume of our small box is 125, the volume of our medium box is 1000, and the volume of our large box is 8000. Okay, just exactly what we expected here. Five times five times five, 10 times 10 times 10, and 20 to the third, right? So, to the power of three. Let's go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and I just wanna leave you with some final thoughts. You know, while it's perfectly legal to include multiple classes in each source code file, you may run into some issues later down the road when it comes time to remember which file a class is in, especially if you didn't, if you didn't name it the same name as the as the .java source code file. Now I personally like to have one class per source code file. That way if I need to modify something in the future I can simply run a command line directory search for the file and find it instantly. So that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.